Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press here in Spain. And we'll also have a look at some of the comments that have been left by viewers on the channel in recent times. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee, the super thanks option on YouTube, my longer term supporters on Patreon, and new channel members people that have joined this YouTube channel recently as members. Many thanks for that. Now, straight into the news. Now, straight into the news. And as we know, the high-speed rail network here in Spain has been deregulated. There is more competition here in Spain when it comes to high-speed trains. No longer do we depend on the state rail operator, Renfe. But unfortunately for Renfe, more competition in the market also means that it's struggling to make a profit. And as we can read here, high-speed rail deregulation boosts ticket sales but pushes Renfe back into losses. The liberalization of high-speed and the phenomenon it has meant for millions of passengers who use this mode of transport has not brought good news for Renfe. The competition with the French low-cost company Wego and the Italian company Eo has brought Renfe, which operates under the AVE and Avlo brands, back to losses after last year's profits. Renfe's president, Raul Blanco, anticipated this Tuesday that the railway company closed 2023 with losses despite registering 522.3 million passengers, the second highest figure in its history, thus showing that margins are very affected by increased competition. So there we go, competition in this sector, the high-speed rail sector here in Spain, good for customers, but not good for the state operator Renfe. And despite moving some 522.3 million people around the country on its trains, Renfe wasn't able to make a profit. So what's going on with this company? Don't know, but if you've got an opinion on the matter, please let me know in that comment section below. Now, the second piece of news and another corruption scandal appears to be brewing, this time involving the partner of Madrid president, Ms. Diaz Ayuso. And as we can read here, Ayuso's partner billed more than a million euros to a company that got rich on face masks from China. On the 5th of May, 2020, Maxwell Cremona, the company of Alberto González, partner of Madrid president Isabel Díaz Ayuso, invoiced over 1 million euros to the company FCS Select Products SL, an organization based in Barcelona with contacts in China that began importing face masks at the height of the pandemic despite being dedicated to the energy drink sector. The invoice, which El País accessed, is part of the complaint against the businessman for allegedly defrauding 350,951 euros in the tax years 2020 and 2021 and was issued under the concept of marketing clients, a reference to his work of mediation between seller and buyer of imported health material, in other words, a commission. So another alleged face mask corruption scandal coming to light here in Spain. People that got rich allegedly during the pandemic by bringing in dodgy face masks from China and selling them for inflated prices here in Spain. We saw last week or the week before a similar case involving the Socialist Party here in Spain and now Ms Ayuso's partner allegedly involved in this case. And to be honest, I've lost count of the amount of corruption cases associated with face masks here in Spain over the last couple of years. Now, Spain's biggest supermarket, Mercadona, is making headlines at the moment because of record profits. And as we can read here, Mercadona increases its profit by 40%, exceeding 1 billion euros, and earns money for the first time in Portugal and in its online channel. We are now 2.1% of Spain's GDP, they are quoted as saying. Last year, during the presentation of Mercadona's results, Juan Roj surprised us with his sincerity in the face of a difficult year hit by inflation and the war in Ukraine. We have raised prices by a huge amount, he said. And this year, the message has gone in exactly the opposite direction. Roche has highlighted the price cuts in some 1,000 products that the company has carried out in the last year in April 2023 and February 2024 and believes that prices will tend to moderate this year. Raw materials are going down, although it is always more difficult to lower prices than to raise them. The business 
businessman appeared on Tuesday to present the group's historic results. Mercadona closed 2023 with a record profit of 1.09 billion euros, 40% more than last year, with a historic tax contribution, 43% more in profit tax, and the creation of 5,000 new jobs between Spain and Portugal, 3,200 and 1,800 respectively. So there we go, 2023, a bumper year for the supermarket chain Mercadona and its owner Juan Roj. More than 1 billion euros in profit, which is a record, and 5,000 new jobs created between Spain and Portugal. So the Mercadona chain going from strength to strength in both Spain and Portugal. And to be honest, I can't understand why Mercadona is such a successful supermarket. In fact, I scratch my head wondering why this supermarket market is so successful. I've got no idea, but if you've got an opinion on why Mercadona is the number one supermarket chain here in Spain, let me know in the comment section below because I can't work it out. And the final piece of news we'll look at today, and it's an important piece of news if you are a car owner here in Spain and you have a diesel engine because diesel fraud is soaring. Almost two out of 10 fuel stations are already selling at below cost prices. The sale of fuel below cost suspected of reaching consumers through middlemen engaging in fraudulent practices has surged in Spain. The situation has become so severe that over 2,000 out of a total of 12,000 service stations are now selling diesel fuel at an unusually low price as identified by business experts in the field who are keeping an eye on the suspicious fuel stations. This means nearly two out of every 10 service stations are selling fuel that is allegedly from an irregular source. So there we go. And as I said, an important piece of news if you drive a car with a diesel engine because of all of this fraudulent activity in the service station sector. 2,000 out of 12,000 service stations here in Spain are selling fraudulent diesel. So be careful if the price of diesel at these service stations seems too good to be true. Now let's have a look at some comments that have been left on the channel recently. One here from Gary, morning all from Thailand. I have bars and restaurants in Catalonia and all my staff get paid 1,475 euro per month five day week, eight hours per day. So it's normal they can get staff paying 1,200 per month, 10 hour shifts, six days a week, terrible. Yeah, Gary, thanks for the comment and obviously related to an article that we saw in yesterday's live stream about a waiter shortage here in Spain. In fact, it's the third consecutive year, I believe, that there has been a waiter shortage. And there's a deficit of around 40,000 wait staff if you listen to experts in the sector. And one of the main reasons why there is a shortage of waiters here in Spain, as Gary points out, is that salaries are generally low and people work long hours in the sector. But as we also saw in that comment, Gary speaking from experience because he is a bar owner in Catalonia, not sure if the figures mentioned by Gary are net or gross salaries, but at 1,475 euros a month, let's hope they're net. One here from Joe, how can anyone live on 1,200 euros a month, especially in Madrid? Whether the server in a restaurant is from Spain or Morocco, how can these workers survive? pay more. Yeah, Joe, thanks for the comment. And that's exactly what workers in that sector are crying out, pay us more. And to answer your question, how can anyone live on 1200 euros a month in cities like Madrid, Barcelona, or in fact, any big cities here in Spain? The answer is I've got absolutely no idea. All I know is that a monthly salary of 1,200 euros in Madrid won't get you very far. One here from Zoe, people need to be more generous with tipping. If you can afford to go out to a restaurant, you can afford to give a nice tip. Yeah, Zoe, thanks for the comment. And this is another topic that popped up in yesterday's live stream, the subject of tipping here in Spain. I said that in my opinion and in general, a lot of people don't seem to leave a tip, or at least that's what I have seen. And people that do leave a tip, it doesn't seem to be a very big tip. There's no real tipping culture in this country, like, for example, there is in some parts of the United States, and people working in the bar and restaurant sector here in Spain can't depend on tips. So good luck with trying to get the majority of people here more generous when it comes to tipping. I don't think that it will happen anytime soon, but let me know your opinion in the comment section below. One here from Jose Antonio, 90% of hash and marijuana comes from Morocco. I guess it will be cheaper because from now on, it will arrive by a truck route. 
on a note apart on truck drivers searching for a job in Spain, many companies send drivers north of the Pyrenees, and so speaking English is an absolute must, not to mention bus drivers. Yeah, Jose Antonio, thanks for the comment, and obviously referring to an article that we saw the other day about how Spain, with its truck driver shortage, is going to get drivers from Morocco. The two governments have reached an agreement. It's going to be very easy for Moroccan truck drivers to exchange their licenses for a Spanish one and start working in the sector here in Spain. And you're right, a lot of the trucks are crossing the Pyrenees heading to the north of Europe and drivers need to know a little bit of the English language in order to communicate, of course. One here from user, Morocco may be better at water management and is economically beating Spain with agricultural exports. We often get produce from Chile in California due to a different growing cycle in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, user, thanks for the comment, but I'm not sure that Morocco has a different growing growing cycle than Spain, considering that the two countries are not that far apart, not like the example that you give there, California and Chile. I imagine the reason Morocco is being touted as the new market garden for Europe is because it's a lot cheaper to produce things there than it is in countries like Spain. And also, Morocco not being part of the European Union means that it doesn't have to adhere to European Union rules and regulations when it comes to farming conditions. I imagine there's some type of quality control standards being placed on products coming into the European Union from third countries. But I imagine labour costs in Morocco and other standards are not at the same level there as they are in the European Union. And is Morocco better at water management than Spain? I've got no idea. One here from MCLV. I'm in the process of exchanging the UK to Spanish driving licence and got the provisional authorization to drive easily. Still waiting two months for the new licence, but no problem so far. Yeah, MCLV, thanks for the comment. And this is another topic that popped up in yesterday's live stream because we saw a comment from somebody, a truck driver in the UK who wanted to know if he could get a job down here driving trucks. I said, I've got no idea whether his license would be recognized here in Spain, whether he could exchange it easily. But apparently, as we saw there, British people can exchange their licenses fairly easily here. That's not the case for other people that come and live in Spain. For example, people from Australia can't exchange their licenses. People from the States can't exchange their licenses. But of course, the British government and the Spanish government reached an agreement and British people can exchange their licenses here. And that is a definite pro because there's nothing worse than having to go through the process of getting your driver's license again from scratch, especially when you have been driving for a number of years, which was my case. So thank you, lucky stars, British people, that an agreement was reached between the two governments. On that note, I'm going to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.